Hi, I'm that eGuy, and welcome to another Game Heart review. Hob is a top down action adventure game created by Runic Games, a development team that created ARPGs Torchlight and Torchlight 2. Runic was closed by their publisher just a few short months after the release of Hob, meaning there won't be any more charming adventures in the form of DLC or sequels, or even other adventures from these developers at all, which makes me a little sad. But back to Hob. Regarding the story, Hob has no words spoken or written. The characters telling the narrative make sounds and move in order to convey their emotions. I've never particularly been good at charades, and as such a lot of the message was lost on me. The main overarching story is easy enough to follow, so it's only the smaller details that flew by me. Basically, in Hob, you discover that the land has become infected, and with the help of your trusty robot companion, set out to cleanse it and save the world. Hob's main focus is on puzzles and exploration. There is combat in the game, but with few enemy types and simple AI, the combat isn't a focus. Hob's world is beautifully detailed with lots of hidden collectibles that will power up the character for those that love to explore. Throughout the game you will gain more abilities that allow you to explore additional areas providing some freedom, but it still directs the player towards the next main objective. The exploration is fun, and the map is clearly laid out. But I found that when I was unfamiliar with the areas, a lot of them did look alike and I got lost from time to time, especially after quitting the game and then loading it up again a day or two later. Thankfully the game does provide you with a detailed map of areas that you have explored, and if playing Hob, I'd suggest making use of the map often. It also shows collectibles that you've seen but haven't yet been able to collect, so it really helps to keep track of everything. This advice is a little too late for me, as the game doesn't show a prompt to advise that you can open the map, and I didn't get lost enough to look for a button to open it until I was 95% of the way through the game. But I imagine with easy access to the map, it would be difficult to get lost, especially when many of the areas are not open for you to explore early on. Exploration is in part a joy due to the setting of the world. When starting the game, it would be fair to assume that you're on an organic planet made of soil, but after some time, you will reach ruins that are clearly artificial, and then, when diving into underground caves, you discover that the entire heart of the world that you inhabit is mechanical. This mix of nature and mechanical not only makes the world you explore more interesting, but it fits into the gameplay as well, as you will literally be restructuring the world around you when completing certain sections. This can range from raising or lowering small sections of the map, to completely conjuring new areas to explore from the depths below. It definitely adds a sense of wonder, as you never know what will be around the corner next, and it helps to push the player forward in absence of an evolving story. As the camera is fixed above the main character at a three-quarter perspective, tall objects in the foreground can get in the way of visibility. Hob does make objects transparent around the character that you control, but it can still be a hindrance if you're exploring toward the camera. For many players, this won't be much of an issue, as Hob has the player moving toward the top of the screen, away from the camera in almost every situation, and it's only when backtracking or attempting to explore that the player is likely to experience a problem with objects obscuring the view. As Hob's protagonist, you can run, sprint, jump and swim. When there are vines or ladders, you can climb them, and certain boxes are able to be pushed or pulled to activate switches or use as stepping stones. For combat, you can dodge roll and attack with the sword. There is perhaps more platforming than you would expect in a top-down adventure game, and thanks to the camera angles and fall damage instantly killing you, it's likely that you'll die many times attempting to jump gaps that look small, or by dropping off ledges that don't look tall. Death isn't too painful in Hob, as the player will respawn with no penalty and no progress lost, and for the most part you will be activating spawn points before any dangerous sections of the game, which will minimise any backtracking that you need to do to repeat a section. Soon after starting the game, you will gain a powerful, uh, glove that gives you multiple additional abilities. The first one you gain will be a punch attack that can demolish damaged walls and activate certain switches. Throughout the course of the game, you will come across upgrade stations that will provide extra abilities. Every ability that is earned can be used in both exploration and combat, although I will say that for the most part, the punch is the only ability that I made use of in combat due to many abilities draining all of your energy after one use. Your energy pool can be upgraded, but by the time I got that extra energy to use, I was used to not using the abilities that I had been provided with. In normal the combat isn't too punishing. 
There are enemies that can destroy over half of your health bar in one hit, but these enemies have extremely predictable attack patterns and the dodge roll has a large invincibility window, so it's not that difficult to time at all. You're more than likely to be finding yourself dying due to impatience over anything else in the combat, as some enemies have quite a lot of health and can take over 5 combos to wear down. Other enemies require the use of abilities such as the Punch Glove to destroy their armor, and although it does open up an element of strategy to the combat, the delay at which the punch charges to break the armor is slow enough to make it feel more like a chore to sit back from the enemy whilst charging, allowing you to approach, instead of rolling into the combat and finding an opening to get the punch in. There are upgrades to increase the punch charge speed as well as increase sword and punch damage, but I still found that I had these issues even with most of the upgrades purchased or unlocked. Despite these complaints, the combat is fun, and there are enough enemy types in the game to keep the combat fresh with the duration of the story. And for the most part, you only come across the particularly spongy enemies toward the end of the game, so it won't be a slog the entire way through. There are also aerial attacks that can be used on enemies, but I never found a useful moment to use these, as the flying enemies are too quick in the air, and the air attacks feel like they leave you open when compared to swinging your sword whilst on the ground. As mentioned earlier, in Hob there is the natural overworld, and then the mechanical underground, and when entering into larger underground sections, I likened this to being in a dungeon in Legend of Zelda. And as such, I was expecting a boss fight at the end of these areas to give a climactic ending. But Hob only has one boss fight in the entire game, which is optional, right at the end. I feel like this is a missed opportunity, as Hob does have both combat and suitable puzzle elements and could have made interesting uses of the tools that the player earns, as well as the evolving landscape mechanics. All of these together could have made for some very interesting encounters. Hob does have some bugs in the game that thankfully aren't particularly game-breaking, although they did make me fall through the floor on more than one occasion, leading me to my death. These bugs won't dampen the enjoyment too much, and overall I really enjoyed playing the game. I got a good amount of time out of it, and enjoyed collecting most of the collectibles. An average player will probably take around 6-8 to eight hours to beat the game, although I imagine that it could be beaten casually in as little as 2 hours if you were really charging through it. Completionists or achievement hunters will likely get a little more time out of it than that, as there are quite a lot of collectibles to get your hands on. There aren't a lot of modern games like Hob, so if you're liking the look of what you see in this video, you're probably going to enjoy the game too. It's fun exploring the world and experiencing the wonder and mystery, but with a wordless narrative and sparse combat, Hob might lose some explorers along the way. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please like or share the video if you feel so inclined, or leave a comment and I'll get back to you.